Welcome to Exhibition. And hello to Lauren Harvey and Lee Ferris. Hello, Richard. Hi, Richard. Great to have you both here. Um, and today is actually a slightly special edition of the exhibition program because we're not looking at an individual artist's exhibition. We're looking at a group exhibition, which is a fundraiser for the Australian Wildlife Conservancy. The exhibition is AWC Mount Zero at Defiance Gallery in Sydney. And Lauren, first of all, tell us how the relationship between Defiance Gallery and the Australian Wildlife Conservancy began. Uh, well, it was 2011. Um, we were lucky enough to go to the AWC Sanctuary Mornington in the Kimberley with Lee and Bill Ferris. And it was the most wonderful experience um, to watch the scientists work, to understand what they were doing, um, and to experience that landscape. So we set about thinking, how can we give artists the opportunity to have the same experience um, and respond to the AWC sanctuaries. So as a, a co-director of Defiance Gallery, how did you physically make that happen with your own artists and others from other galleries as well? Well, we devised a, a 10 year project. Um, after that trip, uh, Lee and Bill, uh, Lee's a director of the AWC, um, and we really wanted to support the great work they were doing. So we devised a 10 year project where we choose five artists, they visit an AWC sanctuary, they explore the landscape with the scientists, um, they learn everything about it from the ground up. Um, they stay there for seven days and they return and have a year to paint towards an exhibition. Well, just before we hear about some of the fundraising of those exhibitions, Lee, can you tell us, we're hearing about these AWC sanctuaries, but what is the Australian Wildlife Conservancy approach to conservation? What do you do? Um, it's, um, I think it's sort of summed up in the mission statement, which is the effective conservation of all native mammal species. And effective is the operative word. So we're on the ground and it's very heavily science-based. What's been amazing to me um, is how little we know about this landscape and this continent we live on. And um, so there's a constant process of discovery and um, it started off with pur actually purchasing sanctuaries um, and then more recently we've been working with other landholders, with indigenous groups, with Defence Department, with New South Wales government, uh, managing the lands with them, which has been fantastic because it's just this thing about spreading the responsibility and the care um, for taking care of this place. Um, so um, I, I'd say it's the, the effectiveness of AWC which is so exciting. So you raise funds to be able to purchase outright these often very large areas of ecologically critical land um, and, and then you conduct research yeah. in those areas. It's, it's a philanthropic organisation, it's, it's not for profit. And, um, and other than land purchases, principally, occasionally a few grants, um, everything AWC is funded by all of us. Well, in this case, and the case of this exhibition and the exhibitions which have preceded it, Lauren, it's artists who have done some of the funding. Um, how have, uh, or how has Defiance Gallery raised money through the artists' contributions? Uh, well, there's going to be a series of exhibitions. We've had four already, and there will be five to complete the, the project. Um, each artist is chosen because they have an affinity with nature, um, they're like-minded um, and they're also very generous because when they go to the sanctuary they know that they're going to paint for a year um, and then they will donate the first $45,000 of sales straight to the AWC uh, and that also goes for their, their gallery also donate the commission. That, that is an extraordinary amount of money, I mean it would, would be 
many artists who would understand uh, what a huge commitment and generous commitment that is. But how, you know, the, the Defiance Gallery also has a target as well. And tell us about the long-term target. Um, each exhibition has raised around $200,000. So we hope for the end of the project we'll reach um, the million dollar mark, which will be a huge achievement. It will be a huge achievement and, yeah. and uh, we certainly wish you, wish you well with that. Let's go to this specific exhibition now, Mount Zero. And before we, we look at the works, uh, just uh, very briefly, Lee, Mount Zero, what sort of environment is it? Where is it and, and why is it important? Um, Mount Zero is a really interesting property. It's not one of AWC's largest properties. It's only, only 60,000 hectares in North Queensland. But what's so extraordinary about it um, is, A, it's located right um, adjacent to the wet tropics um, World Heritage Area. And, and also, it's got an incredible um, diverse landscape. So you've got m mountains that are up at, you know, 1,000 metres, and then they just cascade into gorges um, that are magnificent of many different kinds of rock, not just granite and sandstone. And then that sort of cascades down into valleys of two, two rivers. And then that even goes down to um, Spinifex country. So the diversity of the topography of the place means that you've got an extraordinary range of habitats for many different species, which makes it a really unique, internationally significant property. We are working on a reintroduction project for the Northern Betong at Mount Zero, where it used to be once upon a time. Um, but there's only about roughly, say, 12 to 1,500 left in the world in two little habitats nearby, and we're going to do a reintroduction. We've been working on this for 18 years now, and it's just about to happen. We've been working with the Indigenous communities, with the Queensland government, um, and it's one of the reasons why we have the show at Mount Zero, or have the artists at Mount Zero to have the show about it, so that we could bring some focus onto this really exciting project. Well, as Lee explained, uh, Mount Zero is a, an enormously diverse range of, of landscape. And clearly from the works in this exhibition, the artists have responded to those very diverse environments. Um, can you start to talk us through, uh, Lauren, the artists who are involved in this exhibition and the type of work that they've produced? Um, I think, first of all, the combination is the key and it's kind of what we spend a lot of time trying to get right. So the artists are very diverse in their approach, um, but it's also going to be complementary to hang to together as an exhibition. Um, so perhaps I'll start with Tim Allen first. Um, Tim was a very obvious choice, uh, really, to go to any of the um, AWC properties. He's been hiking since he was a small boy. Um, he's very intrepid. He loves getting out to places that nobody else can kind of reach. Um, and he has an understanding of kind of rock forms in geology. And I always feel that Tim um, has, has that full understanding of, of where he is. And he's able to render it quite quickly with a few kind of impressionistic And marks. very dynamically. Absolutely, absolutely. He's, he's used to carting all of the um, materials and he's very, very practiced and, and enjoys, enjoys these kind of trips. Um, Peter Stevens um, was, was a very good choice for, for this project. Peter uh, often paints kind of coastal or um, landscapes with rivers. There's usually a body of water. Um, so it's no surprise Peter gravitated straight to the, the waterfalls of Mount Zero, which are plentiful and absolutely beautiful. Um, and he's pared that down very successfully into these abstract kind of verticals of the falling water and then the, the blocks of the cliffs. Um, and occasionally you'll see the, the odd native bird appear in these works as well. Um, then we have David Collins. Um, I feel his work focuses more on the feel of the place and the sense of the place. Um, it's, it's not as, as literal. Um, and there's a, there's a focus on calligraphic forms of the cycads. Mm. Um, he seemed to be very much drawn to those. 
Um, and then there are some more literal works uh, where you can kind of identify certain areas of uh, Mount Zero, some of the works on paper. Uh, then we have Alison Coates. Um, Alison has a very emotional response to landscape. She's very, very connected. Um, and she's a hunter-gatherer, so she will, um, she will find natural materials, and if she's in the city, man-made materials. Um, they are powerfully tactile works. They absolutely are. She was very lucky. Uh, she was able to collect some materials and send, send those home to her Sydney studio to work with. It's always more challenging for a sculptor because you can't really start work immediately. You have to, you know, glean glean from the landscape and then and then start work back in the studio. But the sculpture is always very important for these exhibitions. It seems to hold everything together. Um, then Mary Tonkin. Um, Mary is a really interesting painter. She is not a studio painter at all. She only paints in the landscape. Um, so she was under the pump, really, uh, with, with her seven days, and she did extremely well. Um, and I think you can tell Mary's in the landscape, immersed by it through the way um, she captures the light of a particular place, the tone and the, and the colour that's very kind of evocative of Mount Zero. And her work, most of her exhibited work previously is actually from predominantly one Victorian location, one particular patch of landscape. Where, where she's based. That's, that's right. Um, there is a beautiful work downstairs, which is, I think, probably the largest piece in the show. Um, and as you'll imagine, it was impossible to cart that around Mount Zero. And that's, it is, it's of her, um, it's of her surrounding um, habitat where she, she lives in the bush. Although if she could have stayed up at Mount Zero for six months or so, she would, have, <laughs> she would perhaps have been able to do She that. was planning to return to Mount Zero, but then COVID um, mm. kind of dashed those plans. So a, a wonderfully diverse range of visual responses from the, the artists at Mount Zero. Lee, as, as somebody who knows Mount Zero and its environments and its scientific and ecological importance, as you look around you in the gallery at the works from the artists, what, what do you think of their response to this environment? The first thing that struck me when I came in downstairs was the communication between all of the work. It was like um, being in a, in a forest with the trees talking to each other. It was, it was extraordinary and I think um, I'm not quite sure what that actually means or says, but there's something going on here. Um, that maybe they all got it. You know, they're really um, enthusiastic about it. I think that was the first thing that really blew me away. Um, and then looking at the individual works, um, you know, it's just beautiful the way that, um, that a painting or a sculpture speaks to you about a place in, in a different way. It just takes you there through through a completely different way. It's, it's not like data telling you that, um, you know, this in, in the, that the betong is, northern betong is one of the 20 species that's likely to be extinct. Uh, you know, it's not like numbers or things telling you, which hit you in one way, but it's actually looking into the landscape, seeing it in a, in a, in a different way, in a, a feeling way, in a, just a color way, in any, you know, whatever the artist is sort of been excited by, which helps me understand the place even more. So it's, I think it's magical. Well, let's hope that that immersion in this landscape, this critically important landscape of Mount Zero here in Defiance Gallery gives people a sense of contact with that environment. And let's hope that they respond very positively to the fundraising possibilities of this exhibition. So, Lee Ferris, Lauren Harvey, thanks for sharing the exhibition with us. Thank you, Thank you Richard.